Hello, hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Caroline Muche. I know you've all come from different parts of the world and we're so excited to have you guys here. Welcome, welcome. I hope people are still joining in one by one, one by one. Please call your friends, follow the GC Youth Group, send the Facebook link, send the YouTube link to all your friends and make sure everyone, absolutely everyone is tuning in because there's so much that we're going to be learning today. So please go invite all your friends, tune in, send uh even on instagram follow the gc youth group on instagram as well on facebook we're live on facebook and on youtube so welcome all and may god bless you uh thank you oh i see aaron is here from jamaica good morning to you thank you for, for joining us we're so happy to have you here um i see nana nana has joined in thank you for coming we're so happy to have you here we're so excited because the topic we're having today is just going to teach us so much about how to be like Jesus. Um, my name, for those who are coming in now, my name is Caroline, all the way from Kenya in Africa. I'm so happy to be here. And I'd like to introduce my fellow hosts. Uh, we have Jason, all the way from India. Jason and Happy from Al Algeria. Please please happy i know Hi. you're a happy man <laughs> okay I, I i'm sure you get that all the time <laughs> all the time all the time yeah <laughs> <laughs> please introduce tell us a little bit more about yourself and greet everyone who's watching um hey friends uh, out there uh it's it's always good to be here i am your host happy yeah last week i was with you and i think even the other week yeah so uh, I am your host, Happy, all the way from Algeria, and I am your host for this wonderful uh, segment of uh, PCM Live Talk. And we are talking about a very important and interesting topic, and I'm really glad to be part of you. Uh, sorry, as you can hear, my voice is, is different as compared <laughs> to the way it was last week. Uh, it's simply because we had uh, a spiritual retreat, so like, the whole weekend here the weekend starts basically on friday so we had the week at the retreat since thursday and uh we finished yesterday and today it was the time for departure so we are singing and so a lot and we are doing a lot of things so yeah shouting the whole time you're just shouting like, the whole time more or less okay yeah i was <laughs> shouting a lot <laughs> <laughs> jason jason how are you how is india ah uh, i'm cooking I'm getting cooked right here. It's pretty hot. <laughs> in, this, in, in the afternoons, it gets up to nearly 40, 42, 43 degrees in wow. certain parts of the country. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty hot. But the thing is, I'm pretty excited to be here with all of you to discuss such an important topic. Yeah. Great, it's a great. Blessing and it's a privilege to be here. Awesome. I'm just seeing a lot of people joining us from all over the world. Ludimak from Philippines. I see Chandra, Isaac. Um, I, I don't know how, is your name Am or Ame? <laughs> Thank yeah. you from Washington, from Washington, USA. Thank you so much for joining us and you, uh, you guys. Thank you and continue sharing this uh, link to all your friends. Let people come so that we can be enriched today so yeah. before we start i'll just i'll just ask jason to uh, offer a word of prayer yes let's close our eyes for prayer our heavenly father lord we thank you so much for this platform where we could gather together people of different races together to learn more about you to worship you we ask for the holy spirit we ask for a special anointing of the holy spirit upon the meeting today fill our hearts and fill the hearts of the speakers so that they could speak the word that you have for everyone across the globe today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. So for those of you who You're have welcome. seen the poster, I know that uh, you must be aware that the topic is discipleship 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 yes that is what we are discussing discipleship happy what do you know about discipleship are you a disciple 
Actually, it's very interesting. Last week, I was doing uh, the French segment of, of this talk show, and we were talking about mentoring. And not talking mm -hmm. about discipleship, we would, would want to try to see, like, is there any difference between discipleship and mentoring? Or do we say, no, me, I, I'm just a mentor or a, uh, a mentee, I'm not a disciple mm -hmm. or something like that. We'll try to see if these two, they go hand in hand or they're two different things. So uh, for mm -hmm. me, uh, I, I'm, I'm very much excited. I cannot answer if I'm a disciple or I'm discipling <laughs> someone because I haven't we'll learned out. yet. So from, from our talk, you're going to see whether I am a disciple or I'm discipling someone or mm -hmm. there's any relation between being a mentor, a mentee and being someone who a disciples disciple. and a disciple. So I, I'm, I'm very, very anxious to, to, to participate in this talk show because I think we're going to learn a lot and our eyes are going to be open to a lot of uh, new material and information that we're going to get at the end of the day. Otherwise, I can't yeah. wait. Yeah, I can't wait. This, this is going to be nice. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. You've actually brought in a very interesting, you know, aspect, the difference between mentorship and discipleship. Wow. Yeah. So the and so the challenge we're bringing here is what does discipleship mean to you? You know, what does that mean to you? Please share your comments right now. Let us know what does discipleship mean to you? Maybe Jason, you can tell us a little bit about discipleship to you. Uh, I was I was skimming through the uh, discipleship handbook that the general conference has. And there's something mm -hmm. really interesting that I came across. I'd like to read it for you. Uh, disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. Mm -hmm. So, so, so one thing that one thing, one thing that I learned from going through this uh, manual is the goal of every true disciple is to be like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's very true. That's what discipleship is all about. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we'll find out more. You know, we're going to listen to our guests today and learn so much about discipleship. What does it mean to us? And at the end of the day, you know, what are we going to do with the uh, knowledge that we're going to gain today about discipleship? Thank you. I see more people are coming in. Ah, I, uh, Chandra from India. Is that your friend, Jason? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I, there are a lot of people in India, nearly 1.2. I'm not sure if I know them. Yeah, you know, you know how you go to a different continent and then and then they're like, oh, you're from Africa? Oh, do you know? I have a friend who lives in Malawi and yet you're from Kenya. And you're like, mm -hmm. and, and, and the probability is actually something to the power negative five or something like that. <laughs> That is yeah, so there true. are nearly there. There are nearly 1.2 billion people in this country, and you know every state is like a country in itself, with different what? cultures, with different food, and we have a lot of languages. Okay. Thousands and thousands of languages. So India is like a country. It's got many countries in itself. So it's pretty interesting. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. We have a few comments coming in. Some people talking about discipleship. Aaron is saying for me, discipleship is all about following Christ's example, witnessing mm. and being a good steward. Uh, Am or Aim or Ame, I'm not sure, is saying <laughs> discipleship is a, a dedicated follower of Christ. Wow, mm. those are really good comments. Br continue bringing the comments in and at this and there's something that is common if you've noticed in these same statements that people are mm -hmm. giving there's the fact of following and there's a person yes. that is there so you always have a master when it comes to discipleship okay and there's that following the footsteps of that of that master that is so true that is that is the trend i'm seeing here a dedicated follower of the master who yeah. are you following you know now that's the question also we're gonna be asking today so um before we introduce uh before we bring in the guests i want to bring in the one and only very vibrant super energetic uh <laughs> drum roll everybody all the way from um from botswana is he from botswana he, he better be yeah he better be <laughs> otherwise he better otherwise. be otherwise <laughs> 
he better because i introduced him as someone from botswana so he better be from botswana we have none other than than our associate youth director from the general conference mr paco <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys? You guys are doing an awesome job. You guys have got the vibes, and I really appreciate you being here and doing this for the Lord. So, Caroline, I have special guests for you today. Uh, mm -hmm. Jason, are you ready for our guests? Uh, are, are you ready? Happy. Those of you who are watching, welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for taking time to watch this. Thank you for making time to listen to the ways in which students in public campuses can navigate these spaces mm -hmm. and as you are in your public campus we want you to know that the seventh Day adventist church loves you and appreciate you and today we've got guests all the way from your eud inter-european division and they'll be sharing with us we have somebody special this is somebody that i used to look up to when i was at the union i just used to admire how he used to do things i just used to uh, you know, look at him and say, wow, little did I know that God would give me a chance to work with him. So today I want to introduce to you Pastor Jonathan Tehel. He has served all around the world. You guys know him. Uh, we call him Jono. Uh, <laughs> Jono, okay. He comes to us from EUD. He is the PCM director at EUD. So Jonathan, welcome and thank you for being here. He's not alone, dear friends. He is with somebody very, very, very special. Her name is Alexandra Mora. Very interesting lady. And she <laughs> she helps us to formulate things well, especially as we talk about uh, uh, policies, as we talk about, as we talk about church manual. She was very instrumental and we appreciate her influence and we are glad that she serves in the EUD as a PCM specialist. So I want to get over this time to them as they take us through this beautiful topic. <laughs> so thank you, thank you very much, uh, guys. It's a pleasure to be with uh, with you, and uh, thank you for asking us to be part of this beautiful moment. Uh, uh, we we really enjoyed putting together this uh, this uh, presentation, and really we hope that it will be a blessing for you guys. Yes, we hope so. <laughs> so we are, we are excited to be here with you guys. Good, so let's go to the, to the presentation. So the discipleship, uh, the the topic is discipleship, and as, as you can imagine, when you read and study and go through what discipleship is all about, uh, we will find different, different things. So, but the first question that we, we should ask to ourselves, you know, what is the main purpose of the church? What is the, as a church, because we exist in a church, uh, what is the main purpose of the church? Let's take a look at a couple of uh, slides. Yes, and we're going to start by sharing this Bible text that I'm quite sure you're very familiar with. And they were the last words of Jesus to his disciples where he talks about their mission. And he said, Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. It's very interesting to, to mm -hmm. see in these, in these uh, verses that Alex just yes, read, the, the, some order, you know, you go to verse number 19 and you see, you, you go, I mean, this is the, the great commission, you know, go and make disciples. How? I mean, baptizing them in the name. And you see the Trinity here, you know, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I want to highlight very, very especially the Holy Spirit because it's, it's the forgotten, okay? We don't talk enough and we don't use enough the Holy Spirit. And then you baptize them and then you teach them. You have to teach them. You have to continue. It's a continuing teaching. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit, the importance of the Holy Spirit. 
Yes, I have actually a quotation on that. And it is this, the life of Jesus is exemplary, not just in what he did, but also how he did it. Jesus was not immune to temptation or impervious to suffering. He fought the good fight of faith, but he did not fight it alone. Jesus did not sever himself from the Trinity in order to accomplish his mission. And here it is. He remained in communion with the Father and dependent upon the Spirit. So what do you think, Jonathan? Well, it's, it's very clear to me that uh, disciples, yeah. I mean, we want to call us disciples. Uh, we need the Spirit's power to truly follow Jesus' commission. We need the Holy Spirit. And, and this is something that we should not forget because sometimes we, we try to force ourselves to do things. And uh, the most important thing is how are we connected? And, and this is uh, one of the things that we will talk about uh, during the, the presentation. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, let's go to the next, uh, yes. let's go to the next slide. Let's and we there. are going to introduce a little bit the topic of uh, discipleship. Um, it, let's, let's read one Bible verse, because if you, if you really try to find a definition, definition of discipleship, I, I looked to many definitions, and you will find many different definitions. But for me, I wanted to go to the Bible. I wanted to go to the Bible to, fi to find what the best definition can be. So I, I, this Bible verse, you know, is you find in Matthew 4, 19, it says, you know, and he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. For me, this is the best definition that we can find in, uh, in the Bible when it comes to discipleship. And let's try to unpack a little bit. Let's try to unpack this, this verse, just one Bible verse in uh, the words of Jesus Christ. So in the next slide, we're going to, to be looking a little bit at, uh, you know, the, 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 the situation of the disciples, uh, the, 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 the people Jesus called to follow him, you know. Uh, he's giving them an invitation to his future disciples who were fishing at that time. And he says to them, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And, and, and it's very interesting that if you try to uh, break down this verse, you will find that Jesus is telling them that every disciple that follows Jesus will have a life change at three levels. At the level of the head, at the level of the heart, and at the level of the hands. So from Jesus' perspective, a disciple is one who follows him, who is going behind, after him. So let's, let's now look at the first part of this definition. And the first part of the definition in the next slide, we can read, come, follow me. So a, a disciple leader knows and follows Christ. So let's 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 go. And Peter, you you look at the at the first disciples that were chosen, um, and and you can see Peter and John follow him, as as others did, because when they saw Jesus, they came they 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 had come to an understand in in, in a way that not complete way who Jesus was. They would see many more things. They did not understand completely. Even after three years and a half walking with Jesus, they did not understand completely the mission. But they decided. They had an inkling that they had come in contact with the one who would change the world. That They saw that it was, this man was different. He's, he's calling us to follow him. So for us to be disciples and leaders, we too must recognize and accept who Jesus is. And, and as uh, you put some of the comments of the people, you know, is the one who follows Jesus. And that is completely true. We need to recognize and accept who Jesus is. And we must place ourselves under his authority. Jesus said, come Follow me. That means, for us, that means that we begin to be disciples when we understand that we are positioned behind him. We follow Jesus 
Jesus leads. He leads. We follow and he leads. And we follow because we trust. We will never choose to follow somebody we don't trust. Would you follow somebody you don't trust? To be changed at the head level means to know, to come to a clear understanding who Christ is and to accept him as our head, our, my personal authority. And when we accept this truth, the first change should be in my head, in my mind. When we accept this truth at the head level, it leads you, it should lead you to the second part of the definition. And the second part of the definition, we find it in the, in the second part of the, of the Bible verse. Jesus says, and I will make you. So the first, time, the first part is an invitation. Come with me. Just walk with me. But let me tell you one thing. A disciple, a leader is being changed by Christ. That's a must. You know, I remember when I was in a, in a, in a church, I had a, I, I, when I was a teenager, long time, a long, long time ago, I had an issue with one of the, the, the elders in the church, the first, uh, the head elder. I was, I need to recognize that I was a complicated, a complicated teenager. But uh, he mistreated us, I mean, me and my, my friends, all of us in the group. He treated us, he said some words in the church that they really hurt us. So we went to talk with the, with the pastor and said, look, I mean, I mean, we know that we are not easy people, but uh, do you think an elder should talk to us like that? And then the pastor went to talk to the elder and the elder said, you know, Jesus accepts me the way I am. I don't have to change. When you think that because you belong to a church, you don't need to change anymore is because you're stuck in your, in your, in your path. A disciple is being changed by Christ. And this is a, a specific characteristic. Let's, let's continue. In Matthew 4.19, after Jesus issues the invitation to the disciples, he revealed his intentions. It's not only I'm inviting you to walk with me. I'm telling you that I'm going to do something to you. I will, I will make you into something. I will make you. I will transform you. That's the promise of Jesus. It's not only walking with Jesus. It's allowing Jesus to change you, to transform you. That's part of discipleship. Let's look at the next. He made it clear that he intended to shape us. I mean, I, 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 I love pruning. I love uh, uh, fruity culture, um, and you find in John 15, when he says, I am the true vine, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. So it's, it's pruning, it's, it's, it's shaping, it's, it's some, he will take away from you the things that are stopping you to be a good disciple. That's the promise of Jesus. Follow me and I will make you Let's continue. And it says, a disciple is one who is being changed by Christ. To be a disciple means that you know what you know in your head. The transformation in your head is moving to your heart and is causing change in your character. And remember that character is the only thing that we will take with us to heaven. But the change does not stop with the head and the heart. There's another step in this process, a third one. It says, I will make you what? I will make you fishers of men. And we need to recognize that, our, our, I mean, the, the beautiful truth that we have received is not for us only. It's not just for us. A disciple is committed to the mission of Christ. Jesus came to earth to rescue that, that which meant everything to him. People like you and me. He came for you and he came for me. Let's look again. We need to develop in our church a discipleship culture. And this means that we help the community to understand 
what the full circle is all about. The, the, it's, it's not just about following Jesus. That's the first step. But it's not the only one. There's a circle that we need to close. The circle is not complete unless we understand the importance of sharing with others the good news. Accept them first. Sharing follows. And we go again. When we know and follow Christ, we look at people differently. We don't judge them. We care for them and reach out to them in love. To be a disciple means that our abilities, our gifts, and our skills are all empowered and on call for the Lord's mission to save the world. Transformation of the hands. So you have the complete circle. And we can look at it in, a, in another in another um, slide. The three steps can follow me. And that's um, salvation. Then the next, the next step is, and I will make you. And this is sanctification. And the last one is fishers of men. And that's the transformation of the entire body. And Alex, share with us the state of discipleship, please. I forgot to mute myself, sorry. Um, so now I'm gonna share a different perspective of the topic. And uh, if, uh, maybe you know Barna Group already, they actually perform a research, they're a Christian company, they do research. And they, in a few years ago, they started, they did this study on uh, discipleship, on the topic of discipleship. So I want to share some of their findings with you that I think will be very interesting for our discussion and conversation here today. So one of the things that they asked was, um, why do you want to grow spiritually as a Christian? And they asked this to all Christians, uh, which includes what they called practicing and non-practicing Christians. So what they said, the top reason for them, 43% of them said that they wanted to know Jesus or God more. The second reason was that they wanted to be improving or growing in all things. 39% chose that. And 35% of all Christians chose, I desire to be more like Jesus. And I wonder, what is your reason to want to grow spiritually? Maybe you can kind of share that in the comments below. Now, I want to give you a little bit more perspective, because what are you thinking about these figures, these numbers that we're seeing on screen? Well, I will give you a perspective by sharing with you what people who went through an inten intentional discipleship program called Navigators, what they thought. For them, their top reason, 82% of them said they wanted to be more like Jesus. 78% said that they wanted to know Jesus or God more. There's a little difference between the two, if you notice. And for them, this idea of, you know, it's important to be improving in all, or growing in all things. For them, that was very low rated, around 6%. For them, their third top reason was that they felt compelled by the Holy Spirit. So this is giving us a bit of a contrast between those who uh, are intentional about their discipleship journey, their journey with Jesus, and um, com with, when compared with all Christians or all people who call themselves Christians. And Jonathan will be mentioning more of that further along. More th another question for you that you can answer in the chat as well. Do you think that spiritual life should be private or public? I mean, from what Jonathan says, it seems that's quite clear for us as Christians, right? But this is what people said, what Christians said when asked this question. 41% of all Christians, that would be the practicing Christians and the non-practicing Christians in this um, research, 41% said that for them, spiritual life is something that is entirely private. And let's compare this once more with those people who were intentional about doing um, this discipleship program that was called Navigators. So when asked the same question, is your personal spiritual life something supposed to be private? In contrast with those 41% from the orange bars that are all Christians, 0% of those who were intentional about their discipleship path 0% said that it was something spiritual. And now let's compare the orange columns with the blue columns. The orange columns are the answers of all Christians, and the blue ones are the answers of those um, um, alumni of this discipleship program. So when asked about their spiritual life, that said, yes, 76% said, yes, my spiritual life has an impact on my relatives. Or yes, 78%, yes, my spiritual life has an impact on my friends. 84% said, yes, I have an impact, my spiritual life has an impact in my community. And 78% of those who were 
intentional said that their spiritual life also had an impact. I wonder what your thoughts are on this. So feel free to share in the comments below. Now, another question that they asked, how do Christians want to be discipled? And this is a question that was asked among the nine in 10 Christians who said that spiritual growth was something important to them. Notice this, 37% said that they would like to approach this on their own, to be discipled on their own. But 62, 63% said that they wanted to be discipled or to be on this discipleship process with someone, which makes sense because we are relational beings. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna be sharing some more interesting information. For example, one in four Christians, that's 25%, is currently being discipled by someone. What do you think of this? One in five is discipling someone else. Finally, this is another, this is the last question of this series. Um, the question was asked, do you feel like you're growing in your spiritual faith? And I would love it if you would also ask that to yourselves. And 38% of Christians said that they were happy with where they find themselves in their spiritual life. It's interesting to contrast this with those alumni, again, of this discipleship program. This one in particular was called Navigators. These are the people who were intentional about their following of Jesus. And when asked this question, 100% of them said that they were um, satisfied, they were happy with their spiritual life. So this is talking to us a bit, I think, about intentionality. And this is something that Jonathan is gonna be talking about uh, right now. So I would love for him to come back on and tell us a bit more about what it is to be on this discipleship journey with Jesus. Nice, Alex. Nice. Uh, the, uh, it, it is a journey. It, we cannot say that we, we, we are already finished because we have been three years, four years, five years, you know, uh, getting to know better Jesus. It's a journey. It's, 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 every day is a new day with Jesus. So let's take a look at the process. Because we, we, can, we can look at the process of uh, the discipleship growth. So we can start from, you know, the little, the little seed that we can see in the, um, in the presentation. And the first thing that we need to see is that we need to put Jesus first in all things. I'm not going to be reading all the Bible verses because we don't, we don't want to take too much time, but I'm, I'm encouraging you to go and read the Bible verses that uh, we are highlighting in each one of these steps or process when it comes to discipleship growth. So the first thing is to put Jesus first. Then the second, the second thing is, is following Jesus' teachings. It, it's not about what Jonathan or, or Alex says i mean we're trying to to share with you uh, what we find out about discipleship how we understand discipleship but you need to follow jesus teachings you need to follow what jesus is saying bible first jesus first his teachings and you need to understand you get to an understanding you are growing in knowledge of jesus and his teachings every day this is the second step in discipleship growth if we go to the third step Low love for other disciples, connecting. And this is one of the aspects that we were not very good at. And we need to recognize that. I mean, that's at least what I've seen. We're not very good at connecting, growing in relationship with God. We do that, but with others, with others and oneself. So this is one aspect that we need to improve in our lives, you know, is connecting, love for one another, and connect. Then the next step in the discipleship growth will be uh, making other disciples, ministering, growing in participation of God's mission of revelation, reconciliation, restoration. And we can find many, um, many stories in the Bible that are talking to us about reconciliation, about restoration. Let's put them in our lives in practice. And then the last time, and I'm very happy, and, and I'm using this word intentionally, that uh, happy actually was talking about mentoring and, and discipling. And we have, it is connected, but it is, it is not that easy to define both at the same or both at different. 
they are connected. You need to have spiritual mentors, people that will be walking with you in your way of discipleship. And, and that's equipping, growing in the body of Christ by walking alongside with other disciples in order to support, to nurture, and to strengthen in love. And that's mentoring, and that's equipping the discipleship growth. And then, if we go to the next uh, slide, we try to look at the uh, keys uh, to Jesus' success as disciple maker. Because he was, I mean, Jesus, I, I took this quotation from uh, Jim uh, Putnam in Real Life Discipleship, a very nice book. Uh, Jesus was the greatest disciple maker in history. Studying his approach, I see three keys to his success. And I would like to share with you these keys. There are three. The first one, as Alice one was mentioning before, it, it is extremely important what, what, what she find out, you know, when she was reading this Barna study, you know, we need to be intentional. Do we have a plan? We need to be intentional. We must be intentional leaders, intentional disciples. And the next step, because we will unpack them, we will talk a little bit about each one of them. Relational. Sometimes we put a lot of emphasis, and I'm not saying this is wrong, but we put a lot of emphasis, emphasis on just doctrine, and we forget that we need to love one another, that we need to, to care for one another. Relational environment. He did his disciple making in a relational environment. He came from, from heaven to earth to be with us relational and then the next step or the next the next key is reproduct reproducible process he follow a process that we can learn and repeat and for him that was i mean the 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 the, the end of this chain or of this path is infinite number of disciples and he succeeded we should try to follow his example Let's unpack a little bit. Let's go with the slide that is talking to us about intentionality. You go to Ephesians 4. I, I wanted to add this, this uh, Bible verse here. You know, it's important to equip the saints for the work to ministry, of ministry and for building up the body of Christ. We need to be intentional. Let's look at the... At the uh, Intentionality. Success requires intentionality. I, I was a, a soccer player or football player, depending where you, what country are you listening from. Uh, I was a soccer player, and I I learned just just by having a, a you know a ball in 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 my feet and you know kicking the ball and and playing with other guys. I never I never really trained, never. And I remember I, I was studying actually theology. When uh, we used to play there at the seminary, we know uh, sometimes theologians against others. Uh, and the school brought Daniel Gutierrez. He changed, he changed the way we played. And I remember that every time we went to play, we just went and, you know, kicked the ball, kicked the ball, and kicked the ball. And I remember he, that he, every time we had a training session with him, he always said, begin at the beginning. Not, not, not just having fun, you know, kicking the ball. Learning the moves, tactics, tactics, every, every time the same. You know, back again, do it again. He prepared us to play. And to coach. And, and, and I remember that, that time as a learning time for me, for me when, when I, I look at my past as a soccer player, and as I look at Jesus, I see him developing players who could play, but more importantly, coach. Jesus intentionally prepared his followers to go and make disciples. And, and when I say that disciple makers uh, need to be intentional leaders, I am thinking of people who lead by example. It's not that the Sabbath, they will see one side of you and the rest of the week, another side of you. You lead by example every day, wherever you are. And be ready to explain others how they improve in the Christian faith as well. An intentional coach will do 
know the game, the program and the mission for us. Evaluate the players, know the players. Not all the players need the same training. Create a relational environment for individual growth. That's intentionality. But if we go to the second uh, part, we talk about relational environment. John 13, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By these all people, we know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So relational environment, uh, it tells us a couple of things. The first thing is that uh, more is caught than taught. Big crowds in large churches don't make a real disciple because you hide yourself in the crowd. As a teacher, you, you, you can ask a teacher, even, even a pastor, you know, if you need to teach 3,000 students at the same time every day, how are they going? I mean, it's crazy. Small groups are much more effective. And we can see that the churches that grow are the ones that use small groups better. Now, relationships makes the message real. We go back Matthew 22, you know, you shall love the, when they were asking, you know, what are, the, what are the most important commandments? And he said, you know, he compiled it. You shall love the Lord your God. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's, that's a compact the, theology study, you know, love God love your neighbor, relational. He didn't say the world would know we are Christians because we are theologically right. But we should be. He didn't say people will know we are Christians because of miracles, though sometimes God uses them. He didn't say people will know we are believers because we are wealthy and disease-free. Jesus said we will be known by our love. In Galatians 5, it tells you, us, you know, peace and love part of the fruits of the Spirit. Do we find these fruits in ourselves? Do we transmit it to our people? And, and relational environment also, you know, what makes a relational environment? In the next slide we can read, you know, what makes a relational environment for discipleship. And, and let's, I'm, I'm going to give you just five tips. You know, real teaching. Replace world's pers perspective with God's perspective. Shepherding. I mean, you can find in Ezekiel 34 that good shepherd is a very nice description. Also, Psalm 23. Transparency. Jesus wept openly he got angry he was discouraged and amazed at the hearts of, of 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 men i'm sure he laughed not ashamed to show how he felt transparency you know accountability guided practice it starts with you watch i do and move to let's do it together and then to you do and I watch. It should be a guided practice until a disciple knows the pattern, how to do it. And then I'm going to share this uh, before giving the, the, the word again to Alex. Strategic process. And it's, it's, uh, it's divided in, in four things. Share. Jesus shared the truth with his disciple. The truth. I'm not going to go to everything. But share. Then connect. Jesus not only shared the truth, he also offered an opportunity for them to connect with him. Then minister, as the disciples grew spiritually, Jesus gave them opportunities to put that in practice. And disciple, at the end of his time on earth, Jesus did what every good disciple maker does. He sent his disciples out on their own with the Holy Spirit to make disciples. So for this last part of our presentation together here, we want to kind of challenge you to get real about this. How to, can we get 
practical about being a disciple, about being a follower of Jesus and about applying everything that Jonathan has been sharing with us today. So we have six tips that we, six tips and ideas that we would like to share for you as individuals, as persons, as people all around the world. So these six tips that we have for you, the first one is number one, discover and define your why. It is so important, whatever we do in this case, we follow Jesus, we need to understand why we want to do this because this is gonna um, give you the stamina that you're going to need to be able to do this in the long run. Remember how we read that in around 40% of the, uh, of Christians are not entirely happy with where they find themselves. One thing is that we need to have an idea of why we're doing it. And I'm gonna share an example from my own life about that. Um, I'm trying to wake up early in the mornings. I'm not a morning person at all. And I really try and do that and it's really hard, but what really changes you know, my attitude and helps me stop snoozing the alarm clock in the morning is when I have this mentality of, I'm, not that I have to do this, but I get to do this. So when I think, oh, I want to wake up early because I want to meet with Jesus in the morning and I can see how that benefits my day afterwards. So that really gives me a lot of strength to um, continue and to also overcome all of the obstacles that you find along the way. So it's very important that you define for your, yourself, why do you want to invest time in following Jesus, in being a disciple of Jesus and all that implies as Jonathan has explained before. Now, the second thing that I would like to share with you is you can set yourself or even join challenges. And this is something that I'm doing right now. Maybe you already know about this, but David Ashrick and his Instagram page, he started this um, challenge, this DA with DA challenge. The idea is that in 90 days, we're going to be reading through the desire of ages. And I'm absolutely loving the experience because it's, it's just amazing what we're learning together as a community. There's so many people joining the challenge and they share so many um, interesting lessons and it's just inspiring to my faith. So these things really help you to advance. Um, I'm sure you're also familiar, another example with the YouVersion um, Bible app. They have so many Bible plans there. And the really cool thing there is that you can um, do a Bible plan with friends. And I've done that with a, with a friend several times. So we have just looked at the different topics. We have chosen a Bible plan and we have done it together. And maybe it's just like a five day plan or a seven day plan. Um, but the nice thing is with a challenge, you can have like a start date and a finish date. And that's really motivating to just like keep yourself going from challenge to challenge to grow yourself in your faith. So maybe for you, it means that this week you need to challenge yourself to read three chapters from the Gospel of Luke, or maybe you want to um, throw yourself into a 90 day challenge like we're doing with David Asher. The important thing is that you choose something that really keeps your motivation up to um, find that time to connect with Jesus and to know more of him. Number three, to focus on making small changes, but consistently. And this is an idea I got from um, this book that I read some time ago, it's called Atomic Habits. And uh, the idea that the author presents is, it's very difficult for us to change. I mean, if we look at yourself, I mean, when you're trying, at least for me, for sports, for example, that's something that doesn't come that naturally to me either. So I really need to, to kind of um, make an effort. So it's better to kind of make small changes. So a way to make this easier for yourself is if you can incorporate new small habits in your routine and that uh, will allow you to kind of grow from there. For example, imagine that you're already used to having, you know, an afternoon break where you have, you know, your preference of hot beverage. So if you do that every day, why don't you incorporate something along with that thing that you already do? So maybe this week I can say, okay, so every time I stop for my afternoon break, I'm gonna spend 10 minutes in prayer right after that. And what you can do also to keep yourself motivated is maybe give yourself a little reward. So I sometimes do that and say, okay, if I manage to do all of these things that I would love to do in my own spiritual life, then I get to have mm, something that I really like for lunch uh, during the weekend, something like that. So the important idea here, it's better to be consistent with little than to do something big every once in a while. So it's better to dedicate five minutes, 10 minutes every single day than spend just two hours once a month connecting with, with Jesus. So the idea is here is that routines lead us to habits, which lead us to a lifestyle, a character, 
um, an identity. Who do we want to be? So at the end of the day, what we're trying to do here by focusing on those small changes that we do consistently is we want to end up by creating a system, a routine that leads us to a habit and that leads us to the person that we want to be in Jesus. So that's how we make it um, practical. So number four would be to be creative and make it exciting. You need to find what actually works for you. So one way of doing this, I mean, uh, you have to think of ways to kind of um, put into practice everything that Jonathan mentioned from uh, this biblical perspective. So for example, you can go on prayer walks. You don't have to just pray at your home. Or if you love music, for example, you can create a playlist with songs that remind you of the truth that you find in God's word. I always have my go-to list depending on where I am spiritually, then I have my music go-to list to kind of um, give me um, to, give me motivation to get back up. Or you can create, for example, a WhatsApp telegram group with friends for prayer, morning devotion. This is something I actually do with, with my family. You can start an Instagram page to share your personal insights about God. So every week you try to share what you have learned from God that week. You can volunteer to serve not only at your church, but also at university, in your community. How can you be a blessing for God there? How can you share him with people around you? An important thing, and this is something that also Jonathan mentioned, is find an accountability partner. It's always better to do this together and to find creative ways of growing together with Christ. We're not an island. And finally, you can do something like challenging yourself to start a spiritual conversation, maybe with a non-Christian friend, with something that you have learned in this week's sermon. So you are, and also make sure that you're willing to listen. So something that I do in this area is um, I actually write letters to my my cousin. She's she's not a believer. She doesn't believe in Christ, but we like writing to each other. So I usually write and I tell her something that I have learned from something I've read in scripture or something that was inspiring to me. And I just shared with her and kind of ask her, you know, what do you think about this? So kind of create um, ideas or ways of actually sharing them and create that um, challenge specifically for you that works for you specifically. Now I have two more tips to go through very, very quickly. This one, I cannot recommend enough. Join a small group as soon as possible yesterday. Um, my best church experiences by far, the moments I have grown the most in my faith have always been linked to being part of a small group. That is my church family, my church community. And it's amazing what we can learn from one another. And there's so many great resources out there. We're just putting three examples that we have on our website here. So you can definitely access that and download. They're available in 12 languages. So just check that out. And the last thing I can share with you is why don't you do a weekly assessment? Or maybe not, we, I mean, I love doing it every week, but just periodically, just in the same way that at university, you know, you have your exams and um, that's how you can assess if you have made any progress if um, if you're doing well, if you have learned, you know, from what you're supposed to be, um, what you have been taught, simply ask yourself every single week or every month, if that's what you prefer, how has God transformed me this week? And what do I want to achieve this next week? What do I want to change? How can I plan my schedule and my routine and my habits to help me with that? And um, then define maybe your top three goals for the week and just make sure that's something that you get through that week. So that would be a practical thing that you can do just to make sure that you're keeping on track and, um, and you're really progressing in your spiritual journey. And that will help you be intentional as one of those key ingredients that uh, Jonathan mentioned to that. So finally, uh, we were going to share some tips and ideas for churches, but we don't have time for that, but we will be publishing them this week on our Instagram page. So just tune in if you want to know what we would like to share about tips and ideas for churches in COVID times. Now, um, we want to end this with a, with a little challenge for you, a practical thing. We have been mentioning so many things about discipleship from so many different um, perspectives, the practical side, the research side, the Bible side. And we would just like to invite you now to think of what is your next step? We all have our next step wherever we find ourselves in our um, relationship with Jesus. So make sure that you design a next step for yourself in the next 72 hours. Don't wait too long and ask the Holy Spirit to help you and to guide you to discover what that next step is for you and make this into a habit. Once you reach that next step, then define your next week step, your next step and your next step. And that way you will make sure that you're continually growing to the glory of Christ. 
So this, um, well, I'm just going to share two quick slides. You can stop and kind of uh, take a screenshot if you want of some useful books on the topic of discipleship. And I would love for Jonathan to come back here with me so we can wrap it up. And so these are simply a couple of slides with some books that could be interesting on the topic. This is slide one. This is slide two. And that has brought us to the end of this um, webinar on our side. Yes. Uh, and I mean, there are so many books that talk about discipleship. Uh, the, the, you can learn from many, many of them. Uh, it has been a pleasure for Alex and for me to put together these, this presentation. And uh, we, we are very thankful that you invited us. To, to be with you and for, for us probably to leave you with this text uh, it, it's, it's, it's a Bible verse it's easy to remember and remember that we talk about this at the beginning um, try to define discipleship you know as follow me and I will make you fishers of men remember to complete the circle so we want to leave uh, this, this, this uh, last moment with this Bible verse Where is Caroline? I think uh, I, I need Caroline right now. <laughs> Caroline, you're mute. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh my goodness, I am so blessed. Right. I am totally, totally blessed. I'm blown away actually. I've learned so much from this presentation and I can see even the, the people who have been, you know, listening and following the comments that we're getting. A lot of people are so uh, blessed. A lot of people on Instagram, uh, uh, sorry, on Facebook and on YouTube have been following us and are truly blessed. God bless you for the presentation, Jonathan and Alexandra, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so yeah. much. God bless you. I, I, I don't know about you, happy Jason and Paco. I don't know what you got from this presentation, but for me, I'll just share this Three, no, these are not three. These are one, two, three, four, five, five, <laughs> five <laughs> words. <laughs> five words. More is caught than taught. Right. That stood out for me. Right. That's it. That's discipleship. Yeah. That is it for me. Happy. What about you? For me, I've I've come to realize. Uh, uh, Jonathan mentioned uh, something. You were saying that uh, you cannot disciple. For example, we've got three thousand people. And that doesn't mean like if you cannot disciple those ones, meaning you are only supposed to disciple 10 people. It simply means that when you've got a big congregation, have small groups. And right. when those small right. groups grow, when those small mm -hmm. groups grow, what you do is you make another small group from that small group. And that's right. how you disciple people and you are able to cover everyone and no one will be left behind. So that's one thing I learned from this presentation. Amen, wow. amen. Jason? Yes. A lot of interesting ideas, but uh, it's the same as happy. I really love the small group concept because even in India, we have a lot of non-Christians, you know, people who have never heard of Jesus Christ and mm -hmm. very few churches, very few resources. But the small group concept would really, really help spread the message. And on top of that, one thing I really would like to comment on here is the importance of the Holy Spirit great ideas that you've shared with us but without the holy spirit mm -hmm. uh, without us asking for the holy spirit on a consistent basis like how we breathe it's impossible mm -hmm. for us to implement these ideas so these are a few learnings i've got from today thank you so much for this amazing presentation i hope you share the presentation with us so we could share it with yes. our friends and our church no problem. <laughs> Yes, yeah, wow. there are people who are actually asking for that presentation, so it would be nice. It, I've learned so much. Paco, over yes. to you. Listen, I, I, today there's no Sunday motivation. Um, <laughs> this is this is the Sunday motivation, <laughs> enough motivation for today. <laughs> yeah, so, so I think, I think, um, I like uh, how you, you want us to be intentional, Alex and Jonathan, mm. to, to be intentional about this, and I think uh, the Seventh Adventist Church has taught us the truth of the Bible and we have the wonderful authority of our dogma because it comes from the Bible. Yes. But the relational aspect is what we need to improve as a church. We, we are so confident with knowledge mm. and, and revelation and Daniel mm. and prophecies mm. and these, uh, these, these wonderful concepts that come from yep. the Bible. But dear young people today, Jonathan and Alex are saying to us, 
as we know the Bible, let's get to know each other and love each other. Discipleship will become a reality. That's amen. 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 This has been such a huge blessing. I know those who have been streaming in, who've been watching from Facebook and YouTube are super blessed. There are so many comments. I can't read all of them because of time. Unfortunately, we can't even have a session for, you know, question and answer. But please go to our Facebook GC Youth Ministries, also PCM Adventist. Seventh Day Adventist, you know, camp, uh, public campus ministries as well, and on Instagram. Follow all these pages. Inbox us. Ask all the questions that you have, and I'm sure all, through Paco and all our other leaders, we'll be able to reach out to you so that we can all grow and learn together. Thank you so much for this session. I'm sure you've all been blessed. I know I have. I've had so much fun. I've learned so much. And getting to know all of you, you know, we're from all from different parts of the world. It's amazing. So God bless you um, abundantly. Yeah, one Before more thing, we... Caroline. One yes. more thing, though. Before we go, um, I just want to uh, assure them that um, if you can go to the EUD Youth page, you're going to find a lot of resources, okay? This is what we try to do around the world, that we learn from each other as divisions, okay? So today, mm -hmm. EUD is on the spotlight, okay? We've done Youth Alive portal. This is about Youth Alive. You guys can go there, but go to EUD Youth and see some of the resources that are there. And please grab them for yourself, okay? And let's learn from each other. This is cross-pollination that is happening. And I also <laughs> want to say to you today <clears throat> that... Um, as you know, um, that uh, reaching out is a theme that is going to run out, is going to run throughout the year. And as you know, we're not going to have Global PCM Weekend because we had Global Youth Day already. But Global Youth Day is not an event; it's a lifestyle. All right. Mm -hmm. So continue to 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 relate to the communities. Continue to relate to other students in your campuses, and let's all reach out to different races, colors, and uh, communities. Today, our video is going to be showing us. Um, how we can get connected with Dialogue. Dialogue magazine, very, very critical. So please download the app. Uh, it's available on the app. It's available on the on Android. It's available on the App Store. Uh, run with it. And it is for you students in public campuses to be connected with the church and to get to know what is going on. So with these few words, I think we should have a closing prayer. I don't know if we're ready for that, Caroline. Over to you. Yes, yes, yes. I was actually going to call Jonathan now to... Is it Jonathan or Jonathan? Jonathan. Jonathan. <laughs> that's it. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> Jonathan. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, please uh, have uh, offer a closing prayer so that we can close the session. It will be my pleasure. Let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the privilege that we had to participate in this session talking about discipleship. Thank you for Alex. Uh, thank you for, for Paco. Thank you for Happy. Thank you for Caroline. Thank you for Jason. Thank you for the team that put together this, this program. And thank you because we know that you're listening to us right now. We ask you to send us uh, your Holy Spirit, to fill the Holy Spirit in our lives, that we can really be um, elements of change in this world, that we can really be in your hands, uh, these, these elements of bringing others to you, Jesus. So help us to understand better that we have been called uh, to follow you, to allow you to transform our lives, and to go and share this beautiful news with others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all. See you next time. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. If you are an Adventist college or university student or an Adventist young professional, we have something for you. The journal is called Dialogue and it helps you stay in touch with the best Adventist thoughts. Dialogue is designed to challenge you to think critically as a Christian and to reaffirm your faith. Dialogue is published three times a year in English, French, Italian, Portuguese, and Spanish. There are several ways to get it. Visit our Facebook page, Adventist Education Dialogue. You can also download the free Dialogue app. Search for Adventist Dialogue. Or read the free articles online at dialogue.adventist.org. 
Want a printed version? We have that too.